Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. We've been looking at how to get the very best out of Ilford Pan F. I'm really keen to encourage you to use that film. One of the reasons people don't use it is because it's a slow film. So if we could uprate that film, wouldn't that be a good idea? Well, today we're going to look at one of Crawley's greatest developers, FX15. And it works so well with Ilford Pan F. Let's get back outside and photograph that gate again. So there's often times we need to operate a film. For instance, in a low light situation when we're caught out or at a sports event when we have a slow film in our camera. The trouble is though, when we operate a film or sometimes it's called pushing the film, we lose the quality of the film. It starts to degrade as soon as we push it outside of its comfort zone. Well, today we're looking at a developer that operates the film for us. So we don't lose the quality of the film. We maintain the high acuteness of Pan F. Now, one of the reasons a lot of people don't use Pan F, of course, is because it's a slow film and they don't like slow films. But if we could operate Pan F to, say, ATI, so two thirds of a stop, it be becomes more like an FP4 speed. Remember, when we did a video on D23 in FP4, we got ATI ISO. And D76, I usually get around 80 ISO with FP4. So, Pan F running at 80 ISO would be a higher quality film finer grain, sharper with better contrast. Do you think we can do it? Let's have a look. I'm back at the gate. I've got my shadows and my highlights. Today I'm going to expose for the shadows. Let's first of all just see if we're in the latitude of the film with the contrast of this scene. So I'm going to meter the shadows. And I have a 30th at 2.8. Let's meter the highlights. A thousand at 2.8. That's five stops difference. So we're actually bang within the latitude of our film. That's perfect. Probably the reason for that is that the light is bouncing off the fence into the shadows and lifting them up very slightly. To meet for the shadows, we need to take a meter reading of the shadows and then close the camera down two stops from that reading. A 30th at 2.8, I'm putting a 30th and 2.8 and then I'm going to close down the lens two stops so I'm ending up at a 30th at 5.6 that's also a really sharp sweet spot for the lens let's take the shot so Crawley's FX15 was also known as Acutol S when Patterson made it commercially. But when Patterson stopped making it, they had to release the formula. There were so many photographers that used that developer and swore by it. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it's an acuteness developer, and there aren't that many acuteness developers that can give a full range of tones, from beautiful shadows up to beautifully held highlights. So, it's a great acuteness developer. But the other reason that photographers loved it so much was it's a speed enhancing developer. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if our box speed is say 400 ISO for HP5, this developer will process that film at between a third and two thirds of a stop faster. So you can run that film through your camera faster. So with Pan F that we've just been using to photograph the gate again, we could run that film through at 80 ISO. It turns a slower film into a medium speed film. It turns a medium speed film into a fast film without losing the quality of the film. And that's the important thing. We're not pushing the film. Don't mix this up with pushing. We are just enhancing the speed of the film. And how does it do that? Well, it does it because Crawley added phenidone. Phenidone is a speed enhancing developing agent. So many developers that have Phenidone reach at least box speed with our cameras. Now, if you cast your minds back or look back on previous videos I've released on the channel, one of them was a testing of film speed and I only got 80 ISO out of FP4. And in fact, that's quite normal. With D76, I only get 80 ISO out of FP4. But with Crawley's FX15, I could have got two thirds of a stop faster than box speed. 
that's a lot more than ATI. So let's have a look how to make this because it's very simple. I'm not going to make some. I've already got some, as you can see. And I don't want to bore you showing you how to make it again. You've seen previous videos on that, but it's worth noting a few of the chemicals that we need. So first of all, we need metal and we would use 3.5 grams sodium sulfide. We use 100 grams and hydroquinone and we put in 2.25 grams. Then you would add your phenidone, 0.1 of a gram of phenidone. After that, you would add sodium metabisulfite, also sometimes called sodium bisulfite, and half a gram of that. Borox goes in, 2.5 grams, and sodium carbonate, one gram of sodium carbonate. Finally, we add potassium bromide, 1.5 grams. So some of the interesting things about these agents that are used in the developer, of course, we've talked about the phenidone, which is added. So we have three developing agents in this developer. We have the metal, we have hydroquinone. They're super additive. So the hydroquinone helps boost the metal's activity. And we have the phenidone, which is also super additive with hydroquinone. So that also is regenerated by the hydroquinone and raises the speed of the film. Next, we have a very carefully balanced alkali. And this is one of the things that Crawley did so well. He balanced his alkali accelerators so carefully. He has borox, which is the normal one that you see in, for instance, D76. But the borox is balanced by the metabisulfite and the carbonate. So you have this borox carbonate balance going on. This creates what is the acutance of this developer. And finally, of course, he puts in the potassium bromide, which reduces fog. But Crawley also believed that a borox developer, a developer that contains this chemical, creates a bit of a sheen in the film. And he believed that the potassium bromide removes that sheen and therefore enhances the sharpness of the negatives. So not only are we enhancing the sharpness, we've got the acutance built in by the marvelous balance of the alkaline. We've got three developing agents, metal looking after our highlights so carefully, the phenidone boosting our shadows, boosting the speed of the film by two thirds of a stop. It's a very interesting developer and definitely one you should try. Well, let's have a look at how well our Pan F negatives came out. I've scanned in the FX15 negative on the right hand side. On the left hand side is the PyroCat minimal agitation negative. Look at the difference. It's quite interesting. So on the left, let's just first of all start with grain, which is pretty obvious on the left hand side with the PyroCat. This is a 100% blow up of the negative from the scanner. On the right hand side, the grain is much smaller. It's much less apparent. Now, this is probably because FX15 uses a lot of sodium sulfite, which reduces grain in negatives. So it's probably helping here a little bit. Now, the downside of sodium sulfite reducing grain is it also takes away some of the sharpness. But look at this right hand negative. It is sharp as a pin. Now, you can see a reason for this. Now, down this side here, there is a black line running up alongside the white of this post. And that is a sign of acutance. And what's happening is the acutance of the FX15 is really pulling out the stops to increase the sharpness or the apparent sharpness of the negative, which is a, is a marvelous improvement. You can see in some areas it's lighter around where there's a dark against a white background. And that's, a, again, a sign of acutance. Let's move these along here. So let's just look at this hinge. Well, the Extreme minimal agitation has created a wonderful black here of the hinge. And this one on the right here is 
a little less black. Now the light is in a slightly different position that might be affecting it a little bit. But I do think that the contrast is increased with minimal agitation. So you're getting a punchier, more contrasty image than the FX15. But when it comes to sharpness, they are equal. This is very sharp, this FX15. The micro contrast is excellent. Look at these lines in the white. You can see the paint strokes. You can see the wood grain here better, in fact, than the minimal agitation. Going back to this post, I think that the FX15 is slightly sharper than the Pyrocat, which is quite a surprise. I thought the Pyrocat would be sharper. It just shows, doesn't it? You need to try this stuff. You need to test it. You need to find out what it is like for you. The wood grain is improved here. FX15 is one of Crawley's masterpieces of a developer. He made many masterpieces, but this is really head and shoulders above most of them. It's a superb developer. You can tell by this just how good it works with Pan F. This series has been about getting the very best out of Pan F. And I think FX15 really does get the very best out of this marvelous film. Before I go, I wanted to show you a print that I've just made from that negative. And I just think it's so three dimensional. I, I just really like this developer with Pan F. It's such a match made in heaven. The shadows are full. There's lots of detail in them. I like the way it renders the grass, the whites, the high, the high tones are rendered beautifully and the sharpness is exquisite. It's a beautiful developer with a great film from Ilford. And this I think is my favorite combination of them all. You get an extra two thirds of a stop. You can run your Pan F through at 80 ISO and get this kind of quality. I think all in all, this is getting the best out of Pan F.